Photography Part 2. Review this lecture after reading Chapter 1, Photography and Understanding Movies. Use the film grammar sheet in the module on D2L to aid in the note-taking process. View the supplemental videos to enhance the lecture. Film formats. Choosing a format of a film is a very important part of a cinematographer's job. Let's explore different formats of film. Each format comes with its list of pros and cons. Larger film formats like IMAX, 65mm and larger, pros, high resolution, meaning great detail and clarity, another pro, can be projected on large screens without losing clarity and sharpness. Con, very expensive, films with limited budgets can't afford IMAX, another con, heavy, less portable equipment than other formats. Here are two examples of different IMAX cameras. Take some time to look at this side-by-side -side comparison of an IMAX format that's 70 millimeter on the right and then the same image in a 35 millimeter format. It shows the differences in the frame size and the resolution. Thirty-five millimeter is still the most popular choice of feature films, films made for theatrical release. Think about the size differences and weight differences from the IMAX format. Thirty-five millimeter is smaller and lighter, but it's still expensive and heavy compared to smaller and digital formats. Sixteen millimeter choice of independent filmmakers on a limited budget. Spike Lee shot his first feature, She's Gotta Have It, on 16mm. The small light cameras enable movement and shooting without heavy equipment. While less expensive than IMAX and 35mm, 16mm lacks the resolution of larger formats. Super 8. Before VHS and digital video cameras, Super 8 format was used for home movies. It was never designed to be used for theatrical releases. The small lightweight camera allows for movement and handheld photography. While this may not be in wide use, it's still used in music videos and avant-garde film. Digital format, pros, less light sensitive than film, smaller, lighter, and faster than most film formats. Cons. Affordable digital format lacks film's resolution and it doesn't have the same look as film. Side by Side is a documentary that compares the differences between photochemical film and digital filmmaking. Students are encouraged to watch this illuminating film. Focal Length. The lens choice is a very important part of a cinematographer's job. We'll cover three types of lenses, a normal or 50 millimeter lens, a wide angle lens, which is smaller than 50 millimeters, and a telephoto lens that's larger than 50 millimeters. Be sure to read about this in chapter one. It covers this topic in greater detail. Each lens has its own characteristic effect on the image. 50 millimeter normal lens properties. This would be the default lens that you would have on your um, smartphone or any type of camera that doesn't have an interchangeable lens. Produces a minimum amount of distortion, how the human eye would perceive a scene, often used in the style of realism and documentary filmmaking. Wide angle lens properties, deep depth of field, preserve sharpness in all distances of the frame, wide field of view, more peripheral information, creates a three-dimensional look, exaggerates distance between objects and subjects within the frame, movement towards or away from the camera is exaggerated. Let's look at these two images created with a wide angle and telephoto lens. The wide angle lens creates a deep depth of field. We can count back considerably into the frame, where the telephoto lens creates a shallow depth of field. 
we can only see two crayons that are clear, sharp, and in focus. And then we're out of focus as we move into the frame. This still from Citizen Kane uses a wide angle lens to create a deep depth of field. Important information is visible in the foreground, middle ground, and background. Telephoto lens properties, shallow depth of field, sharpness in only one plane of focus, flattens the image, a more two-dimensional look, movement toward or away from the camera is less apparent, and a narrower field of view, less peripheral information. Both still pictures are composed with a telephoto lens. The shallow depth of field creates a single plane of focus. In the still from Jackie Brown, the location is unknown due to the shallow focus. In the still from the aviator, the eye is drawn to the subjects in the center of the frame, in the middle ground. The telephoto lens helps isolate important subjects within the frame. Compare and contrast the differences. In each image, the woman is standing in the same place. Notice how the wide angle lens and telephoto lens impacts the image. Let's compare the differences between the wide angle and telephoto composition. The wide angle still creates a deep depth of field. It places the characters in an environment. The telephoto composition creates a shallow depth of field. It places an emphasis on the subject, establishing his power. Camera angle, the relationship between the subject and the viewer. A camera angle is named for the position of the camera. Low angle shot, emphasizes a character's power and superiority and can make them appear threatening. Dominance. Leatherface is clearly a scary guy. The low angle composition helps to establish his dominance. Authority and control. Shaft is a good guy. His power and authority is established through this low angle composition. High angle shot. Subject seems weak, powerless, perhaps depressed. Weakness. Antonio and his son Bruno look sad and vulnerable because of this high angle composition. Eye level shot. No visual superiority or inferiority. A neutral composition. Often a realist tendency. Bird's eye view. Extreme high angle. Somewhat disorienting because it's not the way we normally see things. Bird's eye view angles are often a formless tendency, like in this fantasy shot of Angela from American Beauty. Oblique or canted angle shot. Image appears less stable. It's off balance and might suggest a state of flux. Camera movement. Understanding movies covers camera movement in chapter three. We'll cover conventional camera movements here. View the videos in the supplemental playlist. Pan. The camera is on a tripod and moves on its axis from left to right or right to left. A horizontal camera movement might follow the action in a scene. Tilt, the camera is on a tripod. Vertical movement of the camera tilting up or down. It's fluid and smooth. Dolly shot, film from a moving vehicle or cart. The camera movement is fluid and smooth. Tracking or trucking is a common way to refer to a dolly shot that follows a subject. Crane shot, a dynamic camera movement that changes the position and angle of the camera. Crane shots allow the camera to move up, down, forward, and backward. 
Today, drones are often used to create a similar camera movement. Zoom shot. The position of the camera doesn't change. Zoom shot is created with the lens and it can be jarring. Unlike the dolly and crane shots, the zoom movement changes the depth of field. Handheld shot. No stabilizing device. There's a noticeable shaking of the camera. Often a realist tendency in documentary and fiction films. Aerial shot, called an establishing shot when it's the opening shot of the film. Traditionally, helicopters are used for this aerial movement. New technology like drones allow for greater mobility. Aerial shot provides a large amount of information, establishes the setting. Did you know The Shining begins with an aerial establishing shot? Why not check it out? This week's film is Rabbit Proof Fence, directed by Philip Noyce in 2002, starring Everlyn Sampy as Molly, Tiana Sansbury as Daisy, and Kenneth Branagh as A.O. Neville. Response questions. Choose one of these questions to respond to. There's a presentation in the module on D2L that aids in the process of writing the response paper. Please view it before uploading a response. How does the use of the wide-angle lens enhance the storytelling in Rabbit Proof Fence? Or, how does camera movement and camera angles enhance the storytelling in Rabbit Proof Fence? Give specific examples from the film and use film grammar. Films featured in this lecture. Students are encouraged to explore these films. Visit the module on D2L and view the PDF version of this lecture to get a closer look. Until next time, have a productive week.